Cabezas. Miss Cabezas here again. Just sitting here, sunbathing, as I do now. And I'm just wondering, how do artists use sketchbooks? Why do artists use sketchbooks? And how can we, as artists, use them to communicate an idea or solve a problem or even tell a story with them? Hmm. I think we're going to have to make one together and figure this out. See ya. Just kidding. What you're going to need for this one is a piece of paper, some scissors, and your Okay, now for real. See ya. Bye. And we're back. So, I have scissors. Always using scissors safety. Hand covers the blade whenever I'm not using them or they're flat. And also I need some kind of paper source. Now, assuming you don't have computer paper lying around, I'm going to show you a way that you can extract a page from some random journal or if you have a sibling's book that they're not using, always ask permission first. Uh, but before you do, I asked you before, why do artists use journals? Pause the video right here and write as many reasons as you can think right now. Go! So if your answers were for fun, creativity, for expressing yourself, for trying new things out, for trapping your ideas, for telling a story, communicating, you are right. Very smart. So let's get started. I'm going to show you how to do this as if you don't have scissors at home because we don't always have access to these things. So we're going to be smart. That's what artists do come up with creative solutions. So I'm gonna to go to the back of my book. And now a lot of people might say, just rip it, just rip it. I'm not gonna do that. And the reason why is because sometimes with the spines, the way these books are bound, if you rip one, it's connected to another and they're all just gonna fall apart. So you might know this trick, but I'm gonna give it a little fold. And I'm gonna press it down my finger. and I'm making what's called a crease. And now I'm gonna use my nails and I'm pinching it down to make that crease really tight. Say crease. Crease is a type of fold, a crease is a type of, so smart. Now I'm gonna open it back up. And now here's the tricky part. I'm gonna hold either side of the crease and I'm gonna to start to first rip. So I have that first little tear in it. And now I'm gonna have one finger on this side and one finger on this side. It's almost like a tug of war. Start tugging it down. And everywhere I start to rip, my hand is counteracting that pressure. Wah bam Thank you, ma'am. I don't need that anymore. Okay, so we have our paper. Let's do this together. Get your paper and let's start. If you have a paper that looks like this, turn it horizontally. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're just going to fold it in half. You fold something in half by making the corners touch, or I like to say high five. So you did such a good job. High five over here. High five over here. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Put all my perfectionist out there. And I'm pulling it across, and now I have another, what's that called? Oh, yeah, crease. And I'm going to pinch up and pinch down. And I got two hands to high five. Bam, 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 bam. Now, we're gonna do the same thing, but the opposite way. So now you're gonna do hot dog, as I say. Who is they? I'm not quite sure. But there are people out there. The hamburger hot dog. Okay. So now I have one, two, three, four different quadrants. Now I'm not done. I'm gonna fold it again. Now this time, it's like the paper's gonna give itself a hug. I'm gonna fold this end to the middle crease. Watch. And this end to the middle crease. Bam. Now this side. This end 
to the middle, please. Bam. So now I have two, four, six, eight little boxes. Now we're going to fold it in half. Like it's a messed up card. And now this is where you need your scissors. If I was using scissors, now it's just going one, two, three. You're just cutting this first little quadrant right here and you're stopping right here. But I'm gonna assume that you don't. So I'm gonna refold this middle crease so that I know it's super duper toy. I'm gonna go the opposite way. Oopsies. It's okay. I just found my first crease. <laughs> I'm not speeding this up so you can see how painfully long this is. Now I'm just gonna start ripping up though. Okay. Like I said, if I was using scissors, it would have been one, two, three. I'm struggling as a you favor. Now, when you open it up, we've got this mouth. Okay? This is exactly what you want, mouth in the middle. Now I want you to fold it over and press so you get a diamond. Oh, it's so beautiful. And you're gonna press it together until they touch. And when they touch, holy cannoli, this looks familiar. Could it be? Did she just trick me into making a multiple page book. That's right. Now you know how to make your own sketchbook. I've used my sketchbook. First put my name, sorry everything's backwards, to tell a story. And I wrote a little poem and had a picture because sometimes sketchbooks don't just create, create or have uh, pictures in them, they also have words. Um, when you use words Correctly, I feel like it's the same as painting or drawing. You're telling a story. And then, when you open it up, it's like the culmination of my story inside. And you can fold it back up. But as you can see, there's many different ways that you can utilize the folds and creases of this sketchbook. So, you might use it to tell separate stories or just to make little sketches of whatever you see, or you might use it to tell a narrative and to have this bigger idea and a reveal at the end. So, I'm really wondering, how are you going to use your sketchbook? You can take a video, take pictures, send it to me. I want to see all of your creativity. Have the best day ever, my smartest artists. See you next week.